right, ladies and gentlemen, please take out your diagram of China and your notebook. We got to move really quickly. I'm telling you right now, I don't think I'm going to finish content. Sorry. Um, I've already posted the PowerPoint on Canvas. You have a test on Friday, at uh, Thursday. Damn it, why am I struggling on that? You have a test on Thursday. So whether I finish content or not, it is still yours. Okay, so make sure you are ready to go with your content knowledge. Like I said, it is posted, the PowerPoint's posted so you can see the last bit of it. You need to make sure you are good to go. And I am not good to go because this isn't doing what I need it to do. Rage. Okay, so um, tomorrow we have no school. You, why is it doing this? Oh my God, rage. Okay, here we go. Not ideal, but it works. Okay, so yesterday we got all the way to just uh, judicial branch, yes? We talked about how it is not based on a one party. Um, it is not actually based on what society needs, but it's based on the needs of what party? CCP, there you go. So we got to where? Political parties. Political parties? Oh, perfect. Okay. Let's talk about the CCP. We got here? Okay, perfect. We know the CCP is the largest party in the world. The largest one happens to be in India. Okay, second largest. You need to know that elections. Anytime you see elections in quotations, you know what they <laughs> lie in order to give itself availability. Okay, let's talk about social activism here. Okay, social activism. You need to know that most of China's protests are going to be online. Who can raise your hand and tell me why? What famous protest tells you that you should do this online? Ethan? Tiananmen Square. Tiananmen Square is going to happen in 1989. They're going to shoot into the crowd. So if you knew that was part of it, you would also do things online. Protests are where most of them are going to happen. Okay? And it is going to... What they are requesting, and this is super important, all protests in China are based on freedoms. Write it down. This is a big deal. All protests in China are based on freedoms given to Chinese people via the Constitution. So, that's weird. Why would Chinese people be protesting for freedoms that are given to them in the Constitution? So, Via. There you go. They're not following the Constitution. So, they're ignoring these rights because it's not, you know, easy for them to do. So, they avoid them. That is a huge deal. So, are they asking for something they're not entitled to? No. These things have been provided by the Constitution that was signed in uh, the 70s, and now here we are, people are protesting for right and access to. Okay, the most famous one is Tiananmen Square. We've talked about it a couple times. It's not just a one day thing, it's like a month and a half of protest. It will eventually be put down by the army. What is the name of the army in China, Emerson? You should have your chart up. Huh? Liberation. No. Liberation is one of the words, but not the first word. What is it, Riley? Alex, put your phone away. I'm not here for it. What is it? People's Liberation Army. Absolutely. It's going to shoot into the crowd, and that is going to lay the foundation. You need to know about Tiananmen Square. It's going to cause uh, political, economic backlash against China by foreign nations. Okay? It is going to cause political and economic backlash by foreign nations. Okay. State-run media is your next heading. You need to know that Chinese media is the most locked down of any in the world. It's in the top five for sure. It's probably not number one. It's probably top five. North Korea is probably number one for sure. All right. You, what other countries have we studied that has a state-run media? Jordan. Huh? Iran has 
Kansas State run media. Ford, where else? Russia. So we have three countries so far that have state run media. China's now to the list. You need to know that the, me, uh, the internet is incredibly regulated, like well beyond you can imagine, by the Great Firewall. If you right now got on a planet, plane and flew to China and you got out and turned on your cell phone, your cell phone apps for TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of your social media would not function anymore. They do, but they block our version. There's two versions of TikTok. In China, TikTok has like science and experiment and like knowledge, like things you can improve your mind. American TikTok has none of that. Actually, that's not true. They do have little helpful videos. I've learned a lot. I don't watch TikTok. I watch the reels on Instagram like a real adult. Thank you. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, TikTok is not what it's supposed to be. You do know TikTok, a, a bill went to the congressional, uh, a congressional appointees board today for Biden to ban TikTok. They're trying to see if they have the room to ban it. They're trying to see if they have political favor to ban it, but Biden wants to. Other countries are starting to ban it. Uh, corporations are banning it. It's like a thing. You shouldn't be using it. Now, I'm not telling you your immediate safety is in danger or anything like that. But, like, there's some shady shit that goes on with that. Yes. You haven't heard any of this? TikTok, yes. Hello. TikTok is owned and controlled by the state of China. They own it. They're collecting something from all the data that you are doing. Why? Because they keep throwing money into this. So they are getting something out of it. We don't know exactly what they're getting out of, but they're getting something that they're throwing money like crazy into expanding the use of this app here in the United States. And you people continue to use it. It's a little creepy. They're getting something from you. We don't know what it is, which is why we want to ban it. Um, it's a thing. Now, going back to the Chinese firewall. Unit, the Great Firewall is to block out anything that is anti-China or that gives more information. Do you think a Chinese person could type in Tiananmen Square and find out about the protests and the death of thousands of Chinese citizens? No, it doesn't exist on social media. It's completely evaporated. It's wild because they control the internet in China. What can be there and what cannot be there. You need to know that social media in China is not the social media we have here. Within five minutes of you posting something, it will be, it will, can be disappeared from sight. You need to know that in China, this is a big thing that AP wants you to know, they have their own apps for everything to control and surveil what their citizens are doing. Amazon does not exist in China. It's called Alibaba or something. Yeah, Alibaba is like their major distribution site. It's controlled and regulated by the Chinese government, so they know exactly what you're buying, everything that you're looking at, everything is collected. You also need to know that the Chinese government has more, owns more cameras than any other place in the world. There's more cameras in China than anywhere else. And it's all for surveillance. Ugh. That one's a tricky one for me, I don't know why. Everyone has their words. That one is for me today, apparently. Okay? So they are watching their citizens. Now, lessons were learned from Tiananmen Square. Should you just shoot your people for protesting in the middle of the square where there are cameras and there are satellite and there are foreigners? No. You will get a huge public backlash. So what they do now is if you go outside your house and say, bad China government, Xi Jinping is Winnie the Pooh, whatever you do, you go outside, all of the cameras, all in the public spaces that the government puts up, which are millions upon millions upon millions, they're going to take photos of you, and then they'll just come find you in the middle of the night, and you'll just disappear. That's how they deal with people who agitate. So instead of killing you in a square, they're just going to make you disappear because you're a problem. 
That's why they put up all these tapes, because all these cameras, so they can figure out who is protesting and they can track you down and come after you at a different point. Because putting down protests is not very publicly successful, so that is why they're going to all of these states. Interest groups, here we go. Okay, write this down and put a star. Put a star and write the biggest thing that changes China's economy. The biggest thing that changes China's e economy is the introduction of non-governmental organizations. When we talk about non-governmental organizations, we're talking about companies that are there for profit. What is one of the largest companies in the world that is in China? Don't tell me Amazon, because I already told you they're not in it in China. What com uh, Riley? McDonald's. McDonald's is all over China. It's super popular. In Shanghai, they have a huge problem in Shanghai with rent. Rent is crazy expensive, even for it. Have you ever seen the micro apartments? Where you got like a bed, you get like a little hot plate, and you have like maybe like eight square feet, and you're paying like fifteen hundred dollars. Okay, Shanghai has the highest rates in the world because of how many people are in it, uh, and the population density is like insane. New York is very expensive, but Shanghai is just bonkers. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, McDonald's has a sleeping problem. In McDonald's, you can sit for two hours and they won't disturb you, even if you fall asleep. But after two hours, the McDonald's employees will like poke you with a stick, I guess. I don't really know how they wake you up, but they keep you moving on. But it's a whole underground culture of people sleeping in McDonald's because they can't afford the rents in Shanghai. So you get off of work and you go sit in McDonald's and you sleep for a little bit, then you go to the next McDonald's and kind of that's kind of the culture because they can't afford it. Another major company, all of your iPhones are made in China. You know that, right? Okay. Um, what happens is for non-governmental organizations like Apple, for instance, okay, Apple pays for access to China via special taxes. Write it down. Apple pays for access to China via special tax. They're allowed to build in certain places. So does that mean they have free reign to pick anywhere they want? No. In certain places. These companies come in and hire Chinese employees to run the companies. Because it's, it's cheaper. The labor is significantly cheaper. So Apple gets cheap labor from it. China gets jobs and production materials. Write it down. So China benefits from all of these people are now employed and the cost of providing those materials. Apple gets cheap labor to assemble these things. You need to know this is the format of China's rebuild of the economy post 1980s. This is why China is so powerful is because of non-governmental organizations. A lot of countries from all around the world, there was a running joke for a very long time that says anything that you're wearing on your own was made in China. That's not true anymore because China's costs have gone up because the people of China have demanded higher wages. Now, if you, especially if you're wearing Nike clothes, I mean, I checked um, this shirt. Uh, this is Old Navy, so top, top tier here. Um, if you look at your clothes, your, most of your clothes are going to be made where now? No, Taiwan is, they don't make clothes. They make microchips, huh? Vietnam is actually very popular. Bangladesh is number one. Bangladesh, India, then Vietnam. Those are your top three major, okay? Why? China industrialized in 1957. It takes about 100 years for people to get fully recognized by in pay, so the price goes up significantly over the 100 years. China industrialized in 1957. Bangladesh industrialized in 1987. So do they have high paying or low paying? Low paying, and which is why it's now there. What do you got? Um, a little bit. There is definitely some legit components, but it's a still a U.S. company, so they do have a little bit more rights than like you as a U.S. citizen because they want the business. But the biggest thing that comes out of it for Apple is low pay to pay uh, these workers, which is the why, and they get little deals on other things. Non-governmental means it's not tied to a government. So these are your targets, your publicists. So no. then China doesn't look at, like Apple as like a U.S. 
No, it's just a non-government. It's just a foreign company. It's not specifically a U.S. one. Now, you need to put another big star under non-governmental. You need to know that these companies will push China to improve its working conditions, its pay, and environmental impact. Now, if you're thinking, why would these companies do that? So, in the 90s, there was a celebrity called Kathy Lee Gifford. Kathy Lee Gifford was on Live with Regis. Regis and Kelly? Nope, Regis and Kathy is what it was called, sorry. And she was super popular. She was an icon of the 90s. Your mom probably knows who she is. Anyway, she had a clothing agency. And guess where all the clothes were made? China. Well, news broke in the early 90s that the women who were in the sweatshop where these clothes were being made were making like, like, a, like, for like 15 cents or something, some crazy low price for all these things that Kathy Lee Gifford was making crazy money off of. That news broke. She lost her job and she lost like everything, all of her celebrity and all of her uh, fame. She's now on like the third hour of Good Morning America when she used to be like the darling of American television. That popular on favor is what is going to drive American companies to ask China to improve because they don't want the public backlash of paying low workers. Does that make sense? If we found out that Apple was paying like children to work in their sweatshop and they were making $4 an hour, would we say, yay, Apple, or would we ask them to do better? We would ask them to do better, and that's why China has been pressured into it. Ethnic cleavages, here we go. You need to know that China is made up of 90% Han. Han Dynasty in China is the classical empire of China. If you've been in AP art, you know Han China art. It's the classics. Uh, Han China was in existence during the Roman times. They're the ones who opened the Silk Road, all those things. Han China is like your classic Chinese, light skin, dark hair, um, those types of things. The other 10%, the majority is going to be Tibet, uh, Tibet. And you need to know uh, Ugar. You need to put a box around this one, Ugar. Um, you need to know. You should know who they are. Does anyone know who they are? Who are they, Brooklyn? Don't they call them camps or re-education? They call them re-education camps, and I'm so glad you wrote that. So under Ugars, you need to write re-education camps slash concentration camps. That's what they are. They are Muslim descent. Okay. And they are being uh, killed off. It's a genocide. They're trying to kill them off as most as possible. This is happening right now. This isn't like a like 10 years ago thing, a four years ago thing. This is like literally happening right now. And if you ask me why aren't we doing anything about it, uh, it's because we don't want a geopolitical war. If we go in and tell them they can't do this, then we have to defend it, all that stuff. Genocides have happened since the Holocaust. And here we go, this is happening. There's also a genocide going on in India right now where India is killing off Muslims as well. Um, so here we go. Uh, but that's the biggest one that you need to know. Okay, religious cleavages. You need to know that in China you have three major religions, Confucianism, Taoism, and Buddhism. Before you start telling me, Miss Bennett, they're not religions, I just, I can't. Yeah. I know they're not religions, they're belief systems, okay? Confucianism is the traditional, you should know that. Traditional, uh, it is going to come from the Qin Empire, Qin Dynasty. You need to know that, and put a star, Confucianism is a mindset that can be tied to religion. So, I can believe in Confucianism and still be a practicing Catholic. It does, it's not one or the other. Can you be a practicing Catholic and a devout Muslim? No, they're different, they offset each other, it's not the same thing. Confucianism is a mindset, while faith is something totally different. What is the blending of Confucianism and Buddhism called, Desmond? Neo-Confucianism, Neo this is your little AP world. Now, I will tell you, you should know from the Silk Road trade, that's why Muslims are in China, yes? Hello? 
Some of the largest collections of Muslims in the world outside of the Middle East are going to be in China. Someone asked me why would Muslims be in China? They've been there since the dawn of time, uh, since the creation of it. Okay. Uh, urban versus rural cleavages. This is where the real problem in China is existing. That is an existential crisis for China. Okay. I want you to listen. Do not write anything down, and then I'll tell you what to write. Is that fair? Okay. We all know. Where's all the money? Is it in the rural or in the city? It's in the city. So if you want a good-paying job, you have to go to the city. In the 1980s, lots and lots of Chinese people were getting up and moving to the cities because that's where the money is. That was causing a huge problem, a huge existential crisis, because so many people were in the cities, there was no one in the rural area, and you can't have no one out there. You need people farming, you need people living and existing there, and not everyone can live in a city. So what the Chinese do is they pass a law saying that you have to live in your ancestral home. Okay, so say your ancestral home is Tampa, and we are a rural place. If you go to Jacksonville, ugh, no, I hate Jacksonville so much. If you want to go to Boston to go get an education and a career, you can go to Boston, but where do you have to have all your kids? In the city that you were ancestrally born in. So listen, the difference between the two, this is what you're going to write down, it separates parents from children due to jobs being far away. Write it down. It separates children from parents because work opportunities are far away. So if you could get a job in a factory in Shanghai, you cannot bring your family to Shanghai. They have to live in your ancestral home. So all of a sudden, all of the people who are age 16 to 50 are in the cities working, yet all the children who are under 16 and all the people over 50 are in the are out in the rural areas. So there's a huge population issue. Is having parents away from children a good thing or a bad thing? It's a bad thing. However, it, your family cannot survive unless you're making money and the money is in the city. So that's the first problem. The separation of parents and children is a huge problem in China. The second other major issue is education. Where do you think the best schools are? Cities. So think about it. You have a kid, you're in your ancestral home. If that kid is going to school, but the schools are really, really bad because there's not a lot of kids out there, there's not a lot of money, will that kid ever get to really rise up, uh, rise up beyond a menial job? No. So does that create more unification or does that cause more conflict between the two? More conflict, absolutely. People falsify their documents to move to cities, which is a huge crime and that you can't be killed for because it's that big of a deal. It is a huge problem in China. Your ancestral home, you have to live there, your kids have to be there. Uh, during COVID, there were some people who never saw their kids for over two plus years. Now, they usually go long periods of time, but because of COVID lockdowns, they couldn't get home at all and you're going to see that causes huge gaps. So it is a big deal. Okay, demographics. You should know that China is the second largest country in the world. Number one is Russia. It is the second largest. At the time of making this, it was the largest population in the world. India is catching. I think they may have caught it by now. Okay, you need to know that. The two major cities you have to be familiar with are Beijing, which is the capital, and Shanghai, which is the largest city. You need to know that the most of the population is along the east coast of China. That's where the majority of the population is. Now, why is it on the east coast? Why, Alex? Uh, because that's where like, the ports are. There you go. That's where all the ports are. Um, as you can see, all the coastline and stuff like that, that is where. This is all rural, and it gets into really, really dry deserts out towards, like, Mongolia and stuff like that. Um, you should know that the majority language is Mandarin. 70% of China speaks Mandarin, but there's 292 languages spoken in China. So, huge diversity, right, Jimmy? 
Okay. Economic system. This is the hard stuff. Okay. This is the hard stuff. So we're going to do um, pre. Um, actually, let's label it Mao's China. Let's label it Mao's China. Here we go. Mao's China. You need to know China's economy is called the rice bowl, the iron rice bowl. Okay, during Mao, China's economy is called the iron rice bowl because it's heavily influenced by the Soviets. It was mostly state run because it was supposed to be communist. Okay, now you need to know that citizens sold most of their goods to the government and then could sell what's left for profit. Modern day China is your next subheading for economy. And they use household responsibility system. Okay. This is more capitalistic. It's definitely more capitalistic. You need to know it decentralizes government control over, over the economy. So does the government still have a large control over the economy? Yes, but they're no longer running companies for it. They're just regulating everything. You need to know that there are no more price controls. And they create special economic zones. This is the big deal, ladies and gentlemen. The special economic zones, this is where China gets special. Okay, This is where foreigners can invest in Chinese economy. Okay, special economic zones are limited areas where foreigners can invest in companies. Okay, not every Chinese company is available for foreign investment. Some companies are, and this is where China makes its money. What do you got? Yes. Apple is allowed to exist there in a special economic zone. They're limited to certain spaces. They can't just pick out in the middle of the rural to build a factory. They're not allowed to do that. They have to be highly regulated and watched. Okay? You need to know that they are allowing even farmers more capitalistic ties. That's all you need to know about it. And their GDP is very similar to the United States. They're in the top three GDPs in the world. So is the household responsibility system effective or ineffective? It's incredibly effective. It takes China's economy from being like number like 130 to number three in the span of like 50 years. There are more millionaires in China than there are anywhere else in the world. Okay. Oh, one thing that you should, uh, that's fine. Okay. You need to know the domestic policy is your next heading. I am moving as quick as I can because I want to finish as much content as I can. The domestic policy. There are 22 provinces in China. 22 of them. Okay. Wuhan is over here. This is where Wuhan is. It's in the Hubei province. Here you go. Province is like a geographical area, like a large collection, like a state sort of. Okay, you need to know it has five autonomous regions. These are places that they allow local customs to rule. That's what an autonomous region is. Two of them you have to know. Who are two of the most famous autonomous regions? Brooklyn. Okay, yes, okay. Those are special administrative non-autonomous regions. So they're different. Those are like cities versus regions. You need to know for regions, it's Taiwan and Tibet. Okay, Tibet and Taiwan. Those have independence, yet China claims them. You need to know that. You also need to know that we have special administrative regions which are ruled are cities. They're cities that have some autonomy, that they make decisions more for themselves. 
Like, as an American, the only real Chinese city that you'd want to live in is Hong Kong because they have a lot more freedoms than anywhere else, or you'd want to live in Taiwan. Taiwan, I hear, is lovely. Maybe not this time uh, because tension is very high. Okay. You need to know that Taiwan is part of China but doesn't recognize itself as part of China. It's very contested, and even the United States doesn't make public claims to it because it's such a hot topic. China claims Taiwan. Taiwan says it's independent. If you look at the Olympics, they just, like, ignore it. Because <laughs> no one wants to piss off China. Why? Because it's China. It's one of the largest economic forces. Their military is untested. Okay, like right now, is anyone afraid of the Russian military? No, absolutely not. They can't even beat Ukraine, so United States stands a really good choice. China, no one knows how good that military is because it's never been tested in a real way. All it's done is really kill its own citizens. That's pretty much all it's done. It's had a couple skirmishes at borders, but nothing really big. No one knows how well trained the Chinese really are and how well it would do in an actual combat situation. That unknown is very concerning. So, hence why a lot of countries are pretty hands-off with China because they don't want to piss it off because it spends the second most amount on military forces, technology, and all that stuff. It's untested. We have no idea how it's going to go, which makes Taiwan even more dangerous because the Chinese have declared that they do want it. Xi Jinping talks about all the time how Taiwan should be reunified with China officially. Taiwan is like, hell no. We are independent. We are not a part of China. They want nothing to do it. This tension's a big deal. Alex, speak to me after class. So one other thing you need to know is the one China policy. The one China policy is the limiting of children. Why would they limit children? Why, Ethan? Absolutely. For the first time, money is booming in China in a way they've never seen. When you have money, you typically have kids. And when you have a lot of money, you have lots of kids. This causes a population boom and something the government could not regulate, and it was causing lots of problems. So they said that everybody living in a city could only have one kid. Well, 30 years later, how did that policy go? It created a huge problem on the other side because in China, Wealth passes through men, not through women, so everyone wanted to have sons. So they didn't give away their wealth to a husband. So they all caused tons of issues. Because of that, it has been renounced, you need to know. They do stop the one-child policy, okay, um, in 2015, okay. They do try to limit politely people having lots and lots of babies okay it is also causing a huge birth rate decline which is a big deal foreign policy so populations are population issues are huge problems in china foreign policy ladies and gentlemen you need to know it's the world's largest trading nation okay it is Okay, it is going to have low tariffs in most countries because most countries now depend on it. So China has a lot of benefits from trade, and this makes it very controversial. Do you remember Donald Trump's presidency? He had a big problem with China. China. Okay, he kept going after them because of unequal trade benefits that China was benefiting from. And he tried to crack down on it by increasing tariffs against China. What did China do? Increase tariffs and also drive up prices. Uh, and today, those tariffs have been alleviated uh, and tension has increased. So what you are going to see, ladies and gentlemen, you do need to know um, that the UN for supranational, you need to know that China is on the Security Council. It is in the UN. Okay. It is a member of the World Trade Organization and the World Bank. 
Okay, and it does hold a place at the International Monetary Fund. Okay, so current issues, you need to know. Current issues, it is one of the biggest polluters in the world. Air quality in China is some of the worst. Okay, it is because it is just a newly industrialized country and going through that. So, there you go, crushed it. Whew. All right, I'm done. We did. Thank you, Ms. Bennett. Oh my God, you're welcome. No, you don't.